Disability etiquette. The term etiquette refers to a set of rules, written and unwritten, governing what constitutes socially acceptable behavior under a variety of circumstances. Typically, these rules, based upon social norms, are not codified in criminal or civil law, but rather are enforced on an individual level by fear of community disapproval. Disability etiquette, then, is a misnomer. In contrast to simple etiquette, guidelines dealing specifically with how to approach people with disabilities were initially created to challenge social conventions rather than reinforce them. There is no consensus on when this phrase first came into use, although it most likely grew out of the disability rights movement that began in the early 1970s. The concept may have started as a cynical play on the existing rule sheets written for non-disabled audiences that were seen as patronizing by civil rights activists. Contents 1. Guidelines in theory and practice 2. Language 3. Conclusion 4. References Guidelines in theory and practice Most disability etiquette guidelines seem to be predicated on a simple dictate. Do not assume. They are written to address real and perceived shortcomings in how society as a whole treats people with disabilities. These guidelines can be broken down into the several broad categories. Do not assume a person with a disability either wants or requires assistance. Do not assume rejection of aid is meant as a personal affront. Do not assume, upon acceptance of your help, that you know without being told what service to perform. Do not assume a person who appears to have one kind of disability also has others. Do not assume a disabled person is dissatisfied with his or her life, quality of life and is thus seeking pity. Do not assume a person with a disability is easily offended. Do not assume that a person who does not appear disabled or who uses assistive devices intermittently instead of all of the time is faking or imagining their disability. Do not assume companions accompanying a person with a disability are there strictly to render service. Do not assume a person with a disability will be receptive to personal questions, particularly in a public setting. Do not assume that when a person with a disability is in a public place that they are being escorted by a caretaker instead of traveling alone. Each category encompasses specific rules. For example, the last two of these would include guidelines such as Ask questions of the person with a disability and not of his or her companions. Hand grocery or other receipts to the individual who is paying the bill. Only ask questions about the person's disability if you know that person. People writing on specific disabilities have given rise to their own unique guidelines. Wheelchair users may, for example, include the rule, do not grab or push handles of a person's wheelchair without permission. Visually impaired people often list a request to identify yourself when you enter a room. Language. Like many other minority groups, people with disabilities do not always agree on what constitutes politically correct language. However, see the list of disability-related terms with negative connotations and people-first language. Conclusion. Disability etiquette exists to draw attention to common assumptions and misconceptions through the provision of guidelines that contradict them. More than that, however, these guidelines are evolving to approximate social etiquette among the non-disabled in hope that people with disabilities will be treated with common courtesy. This recording and all the text contained in it is available under the GNU Free Documentation License, available at http colon slash slash www.gnu.org slash copy left.